I'll take a potato chip and eat it. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Bug the Guy Jin, and today, in honor of the month of Spooky, we will be discussing an anime near and dear to my heart. It was the first out and out pure anime I remember ever watching, and was an anime that helped define my teenage years. It leaned heavily into the cringy, emo kid I was at the time, and helped establish a bigger chunk of my personality than I often like to admit. So today, I'll be posing the question, Death Note. 20 years on, does the anime of my angsty teen years still hold up? Okay, okay, I know. I may be fudging the numbers a little bit by calling it 20 years old, but I mean, we're close enough and I needed an interesting title for this video, to feel okay staying as 20 years later. I remember this being the first anime that I found after I'd hit puberty, when I seemed to think that having a weird, greasy, long bowl cut was a good idea. I wore full arm, striped, fingerless gloves even in the height of summer, and discovered the true power of black clothing being the best possible base for any kind of outfit. I was listening to such bands as Black Veil Brides, My Chemical Romance, and Avenged Sevenfold, and unironically calling such drivel music. But somewhere between all that, I found this brilliant anime that truly kickstarted my closeted weebdom that has bore fruit into being a full-blown Japanophile. That anime being, as you may have been able to guess by the title of this video, Death Note. This brilliantly twisted shonen jump manga from the mind of Tsukumi Oba, and brought to life by the studio Madhouse. Now, you may remember Madhouse from our previous episode, as they are the ones behind the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, but they've done a lot more than just that. They've also done the 2011 adaptation of Hunter x Hunter, and One Punch Man, before the studio switch and it went downhill, as well as having a pretty big hand in the first Beyblade anime. Oh, and uh, to all my fellow freaks, they also did High School of the Dead. I mean, to be honest, They've done so much over the years, it'd actually be kind of shocking if you're a fan of anime and haven't seen an anime made by Madhouse Studio. I can't remember how I came across the show or why I felt compelled to watch it when I did. I suppose much like how the Death Note found light, it fell into my lap from on high, all the depths of damnation depending on how you look at it, and embedded itself into my being, changing my life forever. I fell in love with all the characters and remember watching Awestruck on, no doubt, very illegal websites. This bizarre thing called anime and loving it. It looked just like the cartoons I watched as a child, but had this gutty edge and observed genuinely interesting philosophical questions surrounding good and evil. It had quirk and wit and individuality, from Ryuk's love of apples to Elle's bizarre way of sitting. It was the most entertaining thing I had ever come across before, and I fell in love with this amazing and strange show. I related heavily to Light, agreeing with his view and his general actions as the show continued. A rightful leader of a new world once it had been cleansed. At least, that's how I felt at the time. Let's just say I was an emotional kid. Looking back on it, this has some of the more meme-y edgelord scenes, some extremely cringy moments, and generally weirder pacing from a modern limited-run anime. Oh, and in regards to light, yeah, let's just say those views have changed. Very much so. But we'll discuss that later on. But let's do something we haven't done yet on this channel. A not-so-thorough plot recap. If you haven't watched the show yet, how? I mean, come on. It's been around for almost 20 years. But if you indeed have been living under a rock or, well, to be fair, only just getting into anime, this is the first time for that good old spoiler warning. So I suggest you pause my dumbass and go watch the show start to finish and come back after. You have been warned. Mild-mannered Light Yagami is a semi-normal kid preparing for college entrance exams. I say semi-normal because, well, he's actually one of the top students in Japan, dedicating his life to school and being the best he possibly can be as he works his way towards his dream of being a detective in the NPA. One day, while losing interest in his schoolwork, he spots a mysterious notebook fall to the ground, as if falling from the very heavens themselves. A book he would become extremely fond of. A book simply called The Death Note. 
However, Light assumes it's just a lazy prank, because the book says it has the power to kill anyone the writer desires. All it needs is a name and a face. Late that night while studying the book, Light decides on a whim to test the notebook's power on a crazed maniac holding a large number of people hostage that he sees on a local news broadcast. Much to his surprise, the book works. As the hostages run free, and he hears the man has died of a heart attack. Shocked, he does a little more experimenting to see just how powerful the book is, and seeing just what it's capable of. Ultimately deciding, he will use it to mold the world in his image of justice. Realizing that what he has in his hands is the key to fixing the world, and ridding it of all evildoers. Over the next month, he went ham writing names in his book, resulting in the Shinigami Ryuk making his presence known, and letting Light know they would now be linked until either the book is finished, or Light's demise, and laying out the more finicky rules of the book. Ryuk now became his almost permanent shadow, following him everywhere he goes and whatever he does, but being totally invisible to anyone aside from the owner of the Death Note, luckily for Light. With his new companion, Light set about disposing of the world's garbage, one by one, name by name. But Ryuk wasn't the only one who's taken notice of the killings. L, the world's greatest detective, vows to catch this new killer and, with the help of the MPA, sets up a task force that includes Light's own father, in order to go about catching the one the media is now calling Kira. Following a lengthy game of cat and mouse, and no small amount of death, Light ends up joining the task force, as L both respects and suspects him, asking Light to help the task force in hunting down the owner of what seemed to be a second notebook that had somehow made its way into the human world. That owner being none other than model and pseudo-celebrity Misa Amane, the second Kira. After causing her own problems and giving Light no small amount of headaches, Misa and Light ultimately meet, and Misa falls madly in love with her beloved Kira, and pledges undying loyalty to him. Ultimately, they both end up in custody, which results in both having to give up their respective death notes to secure freedom, although Light has a plan to get his book back when the time is right. This results in both Misa and Light returning to their true selves, rejoining the task force with Light and L being permanently joined by a set of handcuffs in the wake of a new foe. A third Kira. This new one is a CEO and, along with the board of the company he worked for, had been deciding who should live and who should die to best help their profits. After another intense investigation, the Death Note finally falls into the hands of the task force and L, allowing him to finally see the Shinigami he had once been told enjoyed apples. But this moment brings Light's version of Kira back into the picture, as memories of every moment of his time with the Death Note come crashing back. His plan he had put in motion when he was arrested had worked, returning both he and Misa Misa to their former Shinigami-loving selves. And just like Light planned, this spelt the end of everything, with the death of the Stoic Watari, the sad death of our beloved weirdo L, and the end of the investigation. In that moment, Light had done it. He had found his checkmate. Light had won, and L was dead. Upon his passing, his two protégés began the race anew to learn Kira's identity, while Light assumed the mantle of L. A drawn-out game was played yet again, leading to a tense confrontation that sees the true successor to L, Nier, deducing that Light had been Kira all along, leading to our favourite book writing serial killer's downfall. Everything he had worked for, getting torn down, and ultimately, the end of Kira. In the end, this born-again Shinigami was beaten at his own game, and his reward for second place, a Death Note-induced heart attack, just like the ones he had distributed to all the criminals he felt needed cleaning up. A poetically ironic death, for the world's most dangerous man. That was as brief an overview as I can give, as I don't want to be regurgitating the minutiae of every single part of the story, and just wanted to focus on the main story beats. 
As you may be able to notice, the show is split up into three pretty distinct chunks. The birth of Kira, the transference of power, and the successes of L. Two of these are relatively well written and genuinely enjoyable. One of these is a 12-6 nosedive that the show never truly recovers from. The nosedive obviously being the successes of L arc. And that's not to say the other parts don't have their own shortcomings. I mean, Light's overall hatred for humanity and general manipulation of literally anyone even remotely close to him is borderline unbearable. Especially considering how he deals with Ray Pember's fiance. Not to mention Ren's entire character arc ruins everything and facilitates the return of Kira. Screw Ren. If they had never touched that piece of paper to Misa Misa, none of the worst part of this show would have ever happened. But both parts have things that redeem them. Light's interactions with Ryuk, as well as seeing a genuine good light trying to save the day alongside Elle is really, really fun. I mean, I'm still not a fan of his and Misa's strange dynamic, but when you need to figure out a way to keep your goth Lolita waifu in the show when she has become a little pointless to the plot, well, I guess needs must. But the final act of this show is a boring, confusing retread of the majority of the show. And it didn't need to happen. Once Light offs L and assumes his title, the show loses all meaning. Especially when you throw in this weird full metal alchemist wannabe, and the version of L your mother tells you that you have at home while you're at the shop. There are officially no stakes to be invested in. Once L is gone and Light becomes L, I mean that's game over. Instead, we're thrown into a weird new chase with these two new L's that have close to zero backstory, we have no investment in, and ultimately serve to be a reminder that L isn't in the show anymore, and he was the best part. The show is set up for this clash between Light and L from the very start. Two warring ideologies that are the crux of this show. All villains should die, all villains should pay. Whose justice will win? But no. Instead, Light kills L with such little fanfare, and in such an obvious way, that the fact the task force don't immediately turn around and blame Light shows just how stupid the show immediately gets. The decision to kill L ruined the entire thing. Now, let's talk about Misa. I made a joke to a friend of mine a while ago. Growing up is thinking Misa is annoying, stupid, and always in the way. Maturing is realizing she is the perfect waifu and needed to be protected at all possible costs. Misa, at first, is a rather abrasive addition to the show. Seeing her for the first time as an angsty teen, immediately being hellbent on making Light love her and doing absolutely anything he desired just to hear him say, I like you, was boring. I wanted death and justice. But then I got older and I realized that Misa is probably the most heartbreaking character in the entire show. I mean, from having her parents die in that robbery, to having a Shinigami change her entire life because he fell in love with her, to never even coming close to the love she desired from the one man she wanted to dedicate her life to. Instead, just being used whenever convenient by Light for some plan to inflict more pain. I mean, hell, after a while, she's just totally ignored for a brand new character that is just dropped into the show out of nowhere and ultimately ends the show in an ambiguous moment of us not knowing if she took her own life or carried on living it. Misa should be loved and cherished. And, I mean, hell, let's be honest. She opened up a lot of our minds to the whole Lolita waifu thing, so... Hey, she's an automatic dub in my book. As for Light, um, yeah. Remember how I said I related to him growing up? Well, maturing when it comes to Light is going from thinking he is a righteous warrior of justice and setting the world back on its axis after far too long of people not caring about how depraved the world had become, and is the hero of the show, to realizing 
just how much of a scumbag this guy is. He is the villain, literally the entire time, and has such extreme incel energy that I regret ever relating to him. I mean, it might seem obvious now, but as a boy going through some pretty monumental changes inside and outside, both mentally and physically, you do start just wanting to watch the world kind of burn? And, I mean, what better way to do that than having the power to destroy an entire country in the form of a notebook? But, once you're older, you just see how awful Light and Kira as a whole is. Even when you ignore the killing, Light's willingness to manipulate, abuse, abandon, and just throw those who love him under the bus, his rampant need to be seen as the smartest one in the room, is infuriating. Especially when there are times, in fact most of the time, he is arguably the dumbest one in the room. In contrast to L, who has confidence and self-belief, Light has arrogance and, unsurprisingly, a god complex, to rival that of a certain mustachioed fella who lived in Germany in the 40s. Light is absolute scum that deserves the ending he gets. It's a level of boring and mundane that is a rightful tribute to a man who was a total dickhead from the second he touched the notebook. The fact that he dies with little more than a heart attack, even though he gets shot a few times, but in some back stairway of some abandoned building, I don't think there's a more perfect ending for such a monumental douche. But now, for the big question of this video. Does it hold up? Well, despite all my complaining about it, and what some may call blasphemous opinion on me, sir, and ignoring the fact it's genuinely one of the most mid-endings to a really hype anime ever, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that the views and discussions that this show brings are still really, really important today. In a world that is getting more and more divided and hateful, it feels like Ryuk's champing at the bit to drop his book and start the whole twist of story in real life. Actually, yeah, let's not focus on that too much. We all know how that went the last time. But even without the comparison to the real world, honestly, it, it just holds up. And is still an incredibly fun watch. It feels as if the shows like Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen really took the ball that Death Note kind of hail married and ran with it. It's still entertaining to watch and still has some of the most enjoyable memes to be birthed by an anime. I mean, come on. I'll take a chip and eat it. And then the clip of just L staring at the side of Light's face still genuinely make me laugh. In my opinion, if it's been a while and you're now in a little bit of a lull anime-wise waiting for Dan, Dan to finish to binge it, or eagerly awaiting the release of Look Back, Goodbye Eddie, and Chainsaw Man the Bomb Arc movies from the brilliantly insane mind of Fujimoto like I am, rewatching this classic is incredibly fun and worth every second. Even with the huge drop-off, it's worth the time to just snuggle under a blanket this winter and relive the brilliance of this show. And, hell, if you haven't watched it before... Well, I suppose this is actually a little bit awkward now, isn't it? Because you just watched me poorly broad stroke it, and then just kind of berate it. But still watch it, and form your own opinions, and come back and tell me if you agree or, or if you think I'm dead wrong. This show, I feel, is a brilliant place for anyone that is getting into both manga and anime to start. It's a wonderful example of the more esoteric version of anime being made. And it puts a really, really, really good focus on human values and a personal person's thought and desire. For now, that's where I'm going to leave this one. If you like this, please consider writing that subscribe button's name in your death note. And make sure that the cause of death is to die from overpressing. And give that like button a good hiding while you're at it. Um, but on a serious note, uh, I, I want to thank everyone who subscribed after the Digimon video. You don't truly understand how amazing it is seeing that video get even five views. 
much less like the close to 2.5 thousand it's got um and the the new subscribers i i received in my script originally i wrote the 20 new subs i received the 21 new subs even and that number's gone up even since then i'm now at 40 subs and to a dude that's just sat in a room just kind of talking aimlessly at a microphone over something I grew up really enjoying, it's kind of insane to me. Like, you can see how many videos exist on this channel alone of me uploading stuff. Seeing something that I made get even the slightest bit of attention, it just, it fills me with happiness. And I, I, I genuinely don't think that anyone knows how amazing it all makes me feel so thank you so so much from from the bottom of my heart thank you um thank you for listening to this welsh idiot ramble about the anime i love the things i grew up on and i mean hell just talking um and i hope you join me for so many more rants raves reviews and just all the dumb things i have planned for the future um i got some dumb ideas i got some real dumb ideas coming down the pipeline hopefully so uh hey if you're a fan of stupid welshman talking i think i know the channel you should sit and enjoy subscribing to but uh with that i'm off to go finish eva because i totally didn't get distracted by getting obsessed with this show again and needed to write a script that was more spooky focused um because, you know, Halloween, gotta have spooks. Uh, you'll also notice that this is the second video like this in a month. Uh, that's not the plan. The plan is to make these kind of reviews like a once a month thing. Um, or twice monthly if if I have the time. But uh, at the moment the aim is once a month. But uh, given it was spooky month and my last video was Digimon. Um, I kind of figured that didn't really suit the mood of the month. So, uh, yeah, it, you can expect another video next month, obviously, but, uh, maybe not until, like, the middle towards the end of the month. Um, but that video, that, uh, I've also, I'll also be watching, gonna be going and re-watching a very classic show that, uh, I grew up on and loved and wanted to be, genuinely, my, I wanted my job to be, be that show. Um, that'll make more sense when it comes to when I make the video. But uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be watching. But uh, what I will say is uh, you're going to need your morphers for that one. So, uh, yeah, better be get ready for that. Uh, as always, I've been Burke. And, uh, yeah, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. Or generally one hell of a day. And uh, I'll see you next time. Sayonara. Bye-bye.